We recommend this product be installed by a competent gunsmith. Modification of your firearm may nullify the warranty of the firearms manufacturer. No liability is expressed or implied for damage or injury which may occur from improper use or installation of this product. You are responsible for the safe handling legalities and use of your firearm. Warning! Always wear safety glasses when working on firearms. Hi guys, Scott Folk here from Apex Tactical Specialties. Today I'm going to walk you through the installation of our trigger and trigger bar kits for the Sig Sauer P320 line of pistols. For this install, we're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers, a hammer, a 332nd inch pin punch or equivalent, and some gun grade oil. With the fire control unit removed from the grip frame, I need to take it apart, take the trigger bar and the trigger body out of the frame. First thing I'll do is pull up on the slide lock lever and make sure the sear has been disconnected. In this case, it already has, so there's no problem. I'm gonna roll it around, then I'm gonna grab the trigger return spring, and I'm gonna rotate it outward away from the frame, kind of push in and get it to disconnect from the, from the housing. I'll rotate it out, lift it away, set it aside. From here, I'll take the trigger bar, I'll pull it out of the housing, kind of drop it down, pull it out of the housing, and push it below. Now, I should be able to grab the trigger body, pull it up, and pull that whole thing out of the fire control module. I'm gonna give you a side-by-side -side of the factory components versus Apex, so it's easier to identify the components you're looking at. The factory trigger bar is silver, and it also has letters and numbers on the sides, which identify the mold it came out of when the metal injection molded the trigger bar. The factory trigger body has a big pocket in the side, and in this case, has a little dimple on the top of the tab. The Apex trigger obviously has our distinctive shape to it, so it's pretty obvious to tell the difference. And the Apex trigger bar has, of course, our name on it with the patented mark as well. You'll also notice that the over-travel stop and screw come with it as well. After we remove the trigger and trigger bar, we need to remove the over-travel stop pin. That's this guy right here. You'll notice there's a head on the pin. It can only be pushed out one direction. So I'll put my pin punch on top of that, and I'll tap it through with a hammer. In this case, mine came out very easily because I've already removed it before. You may have to do a little bit more tapping to pop it out of there. Once it's out, you can pull it down. You don't have to go all the way out. I would pull it to about there, and then we'll put the spring and over-travel stop in position. With the over-travel stop partially removed, I'll take the spring on the end of my pin punch, set that in position over the over-travel stop, and try to get it where it just sits where it's in its, in its final position. Now, we'll put the over-travel stop in. With the over-travel spring in place, I'll take the over-travel stop itself, I'll put it on top of that spring and try to compress it while I push it into position. It's gonna kinda hang there precariously for the time being. If you want to use your pin punch to make it, to kind of slave pin it in position, that would be useful. So I'll put mine through here to at least capture the over-travel stop. Then I'll come in and push the pin across, make sure it catches in the over-travel stop as I push it, oh, there it goes, all the way through. The idea is to make sure the pin goes all the way through the spring and the over-travel stop and comes out the other side of your frame. A quick cautionary tale for you too, if you hold the over-travel stop up and the pin protrudes out of the frame a little bit, that's because the staking they put on the end of the pin has popped up when it was removed. You might need to take a little diamond file or a file and just trim the end of that off so it doesn't bind on the trigger bar once it's installed. Before we install the trigger and trigger bar, I wanna make sure we lubricate things. So I'll take a drop of oil and put it right here on the stud. That's really all that's necessary, but you definitely wanna have some lubricant in there. Remember, you have metal on metal rubbing, you've gotta lubricate it. Now we're gonna install the trigger body and trigger bar into the frame. I'll take the trigger body first, set it in, and I'll use my finger on the backside to kind of hold it up off the frame just a little bit. I'll take the trigger bar, fish it in, capture that boss in the back of the trigger body, and then I'll just wiggle the trigger around until I can drop the trigger body all the way down and get in the frame. If I hold my thumb on top, I should be able to articulate the trigger body in the frame so we have it in position. Now we're gonna install the, the trigger return spring next. After I have the trigger and trigger bar installed into the fire control unit, I need to install the trigger return spring. My method for this is relatively simple, but this will be the most difficult part, so take your time and rewatch the video if you need to. I put my thumb on top of the junction between the trigger and trigger bar to hold it in place so nothing comes loose. I'll grab the trigger bar, I'll pull it out around the sear housing, like this, and I'll put it all the way at the back. By doing so, you give yourself enough space to, to detension the spring while you install it. So you want this all the way around the back side. I'll install the trigger return spring into the hole in the trigger bar. I'll roll it up and I'll push this, the return spring into the notch in the frame and capture it. Once I'm captured, I'm in the hole like I'm supposed to be. Now all I have to do is bring it around, carry it into the sear housing, and you can see it's fully engaged. This will take a few tries. With the fire control unit assembled, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick function check. I'll put my finger on the back of the housing here and I'll pull the trigger. I'm looking for the sear moving and the lifter pop properly lifting up, which they do. From here, I'll hold those down and I'll pop the disconnect at the front. And then I'll reset the sear 
and pull the trigger again. What I'm looking for is to make sure this, the sear itself is pushing, popping up when I hit that disconnector. And in this case, you can see it is working correctly. So we'll put this back in the frame and we'll test it with the slide on as well. A quick note I wanted to add, if you put your slide back on and you don't use your slide lock lever to hold the slide back, you'll get a dead trigger. Meaning that I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Even if I cycle the slide, nothing's happening. That's because the slide lock lever wasn't used to lock the slide when I put it together. So if I pull the slide back and I press it up, you hear the sear completely re-engage. Once I let back forward, now it's normal function. So be aware of that. If that happens to you, make sure you lock the slide back, use the slide lock lever for that purpose, and then try it again. With everything fully assembled, I'm gonna do a functions check. I'll pull the slide back, of course, make sure we're unloaded. Once I've done so, I'll pull the trigger, hear the striker fall, hold the trigger down, cycle the slide, release slowly. I get a reset, re-engage, it drops again. I'll release the trigger entirely, get my finger off of it, pull the slide back, check it, and this is normal function. As you can see, the installation of the trigger and bar are pretty straightforward. The most difficult part is getting that spring back on, but our tricks give you a pretty easy way to do it. If you have any questions with the installation, always contact Apex Customer Service. We'll be happy to help.